Okay, so today I'm going to do a little lesson on waves. Um, so it's a physics lesson. And um, there are two um, main types of waves, um, transverse and longitudinal. So the first one I'm going to start with is transverse because this is probably the one that you're more familiar with. So transverse waves actually have this wave-like shape. So technically, if we're talking about like water waves or if you took a rope and you moved it around, those would be transverse waves. And the reason that they're transverse waves is because the disturbance, the thing that's creating the wave, is perpendicular to the direction that the wave actually travels in. So like, for example, if this was a rope and I were to take it and kind of move it up and down like this, so my hand would be moving it up and down, but the waves would go out that way. So the disturbance is perpendicular to the way that the wave is actually moving. Now the anatomy of a wave is like this. It has like an up part and a down part here. And this is described as one wavelength. And if you have longer waves, okay, you tend to have a lower frequency. Think of frequency as exactly that, how frequent it is, okay? So if I have shorter waves, I have a more frequent wave, okay? So that's what, that's the difference between wavelength and frequency and waves. So if you have longer waves, shorter frequency, um, shorter waves, higher frequency. It's, it's happening more often. Now, transverse waves are, like I said, physical waves like water waves, or oddly, they are any of our light waves. Now, we know light as visible light, the light that's in the visible spectrum, which is actually just a tiny, tiny part of all of the different types of light. Gamma, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, radio waves, even microwaves, um, and the radio waves include AM um, and FM radio waves. Those are all different types of light, um, even though we know light as the type that we can see, but these are all considered, all the different electromagnetic waves are considered light. And what's interesting is they all have this wavy shape and it's not always necessarily like one dimensional. Sometimes you can have one that's in like, that's going up and down. You might have one that's going side to side through it. Um, I can't really draw that for you. But when you have those, those multi-wave um, pieces, that's like the purpose of say like polarizing sunglasses. It pulls one of the waves out that would like bother your eyes um, to, make, to make the, you know, the light less obnoxious through your, through your sunglasses. So again, these are electromagnetic waves, which are transverse waves. And I'm going to show you how to model those in a couple of minutes with uh, using a sling. So the other type of wave is a longitudinal wave. And the difference here is that you can see a wavelength from like, see how the lines are further and then they get closer and then they're further and then they get closer. A wavelength here would be from like the... Um, the region where they're closest together in one area to where they're closest together in another area. That would be like a wavelength here. And the difference is, whereas before the disturbance was perpendicular to the way that the wave was moving, here they're in the same direction. So if I were going to make a longitudinal wave, I might force out, okay, that way, and the wave, so that's the disturbance, but the wave would also go that way. So these are, these are pressure waves. And this is actually the way that sound travels. And I'm gonna talk about this again a little bit later when I model this with a slinky. But when you talk or when there's a noise, okay, the, the um, air molecules are, they vibrate, they're disturbed, and they move until they hit another air molecule, which moves the sound through the air until it hits your eardrum and you can process it as sound in your brain. This is why there's no sound in space because there are no air molecules in space for these vibrations to, to happen. So you can't move the sound from one place to another. Um, uh, earthquake waves also move in this fashion. Um, and again, like I said with the transverse waves, you will be able to easily model this using a simple slinky. Boone and I are going to model waves using a slinky. This is an extra long slinky um, that I bought from a science catalog, but you could definitely model this with just a regular slinky. It does work better with a metal one though. Okay, so we're gonna model for you waves, the different types of waves using a slinky. So Boone, take this end and very carefully walk it down to the door on the other side of the room there. Okay, go ahead. Mommy's gonna hold this side. Go all the way down. Oop, wait a minute. There you go. Okay, now all the way. Keep going. All right, stop. And just kneel down. 
Okay. So all I need you to do is hold the end. Okay, bub? All right. So on a slinky, you can model both types of waves. The first I'm going to model is a, uh, a transverse wave. And I got to switch to my dominant hand here. Okay. And a transverse wave, to make that happen, you're going to wave the slinky back and forth like this because that's that's the not you you're just going to you're just going to hold still just hold the slinky okay so the the disturbance the thing that's causing the wave which is my hand is going to go left to right but the direction of the wave is going to go straight that way so the direction of the wave and the motion of my hand make a T shape so they're perpendicular to each other and that's how you know that this is a transverse wave okay so boom just hold it okay Okay, so that's a transverse wave. Now, a couple of things you can model here as well. If I make a bigger wavelength, the waves are less frequent. So a high wavelength results in a lower frequency. Again, just hold that nice and tight down there, okay, bud? Okay, yeah, so if I make bigger waves, they're less frequent. But if I make smaller waves, they are more frequent, okay? Now, the other type of wave that you can model with a slinky is a longitudinal wave. And to make a longitudinal wave or a pulse wave or a pressure wave, excuse me, you move your hand quickly that way. So the disturbance, which is my hand, is that way. And the direction of the wave is also that way. Since those two lines are on top of each other, they are parallel. And so the disturbance and the motion in a longitudinal wave are parallel to one another. So you can see it travel down the slinky. So you saw that, right? And you can actually see it reflect off of Boone. Just hold still, okay, bud? You can see it reflect and come back to me and he didn't even do anything. No, that time he did, just Boone. <laughs> Boone's making longitudinal waves too. Okay. Okay, one more. Cool, all right. So this is how sound waves travel, okay? Sound waves travel when you make a noise. So like that would be you making a noise. It travels by the, um, the air molecules bumping off of one another to send the signal down. And so this, Boone, just hold it, okay? as it bounces back to me a little bit, that would be like an echo, okay? Now, one last thing I wanna point out, all waves do, whether they're in the ocean or in the air, if they're light or whatever, all they transfer is energy. Waves in the ocean, don't, don't, um, they don't move matter, they just move energy. So the way to think about this, when I send a wave down, did pieces of the slinky from this end travel to the other end? No. All these atoms in this part of the slinky stay here. The only thing that gets transferred down is the energy. And the same thing goes for waves in the ocean. That's why you would bob up and down in the ocean or why a buoy goes up and down. It doesn't get washed ashore. The thing that would wash it ashore would be undercurrents. So again, you can do this with a slinky, a shorter one. It doesn't have to be this long but just make sure it does work better with a metal one.